Okay, let's look at it real quickly, okay? Just what Eris was talking about there in your Bible. It's uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. Let's uh, open your Bible there. I hope you have it with you. We'll take uh, just a quick look at this event that took place somewhere on this mountain. Don't know exactly where. This is kind of the traditional site, you know, but, but it's their guess. Um, after this event took place, I'll just point this out. You know, there had been a drought in Israel for like over three years. And um, Ahab was blaming Elijah for the drought. And, uh, and Elijah said, it's not me, Ahab, it's you. And it's, it's, it's this idol worship that uh, the country has just been swept with through uh, Jezebel and Ahab's support of that. And uh, so when this event took place, ended, uh, if you remember the story, Elijah's servant, Elijah said, I want you to go over on the hill here and I want you to look out at the Mediterranean. And if the trees weren't right here and everything, just over the hill there is the Mediterranean Sea. We were driving by it, you know, just a little while ago and say, look for a cloud. And Elijah prayed here. And the Bible says he prayed seven times and sent the guy back over there to take a look. And finally he says, I see one little cloud about the side of a fist. And Elijah told Ahab at that point, he said, get in your chariot and hightail it out of here because there's a gully washer coming. <laughs> and sure enough, it did, you know, and God sent rain. But anyway, let's look at the story here. Um, if you have your Bible, 1 Kings 18, verse 17, and it happened right here, the Valley of Jezreel, you hardly can see it. We've got such a, a, a hazy day here, but it's, it's just right down there. It's just right down below us. And uh, so verse 17, we'll look at verse 17. Then it happened when Ahab saw Elijah that Ahab said to him, is that you, O troubler of Israel? And he answered, Elijah, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord and have followed the Baals or the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to meet a Mount Carmel. That's where we are sitting right now. <clears throat> and the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, uh, who eat at Jezebel's table. So Ahab sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came uh, to all the people and said, how long will you falter between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. And if Baal, follow him. But the pe people answered him not a word. That how long will you falter between two opinions is how long will you be hopping between two forks, you know? Make up your mind. Now, here's the thing, and you see it to this day. People say, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Lord. But you know what? There are certain things where we look other places to satisfy us, you know? And so there the, uh, Baal made some offers that would sound pretty good sometimes. So it would be like, well, I believe in the Lord, and the Lord's good, you know, and then the God of Israel and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, Baal kind of works for this or that, you know, and I go to him for this or that. And they're divided. Their, their loyalty is divided. Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You're going to love one and hate the other. You're going to follow one and you're going to reject the other. You know, you just can't do that. And that's what these people were trying to do. And it doesn't work. When it comes to Lord God, you've got to wholeheartedly give it to him and follow him and say, I'm following you now, you know. And so that's what the people were doing. And it's a, a, it's a common thing. So uh, he goes on there. Um, verse 22. But Elijah said to the people, I alone am left of all the prophets of the Lord. Uh, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Therefore, let them give us two bowls. Let them choose one bowl for themselves, cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood but no fire under it. And I will prepare the other bowl and lay fire of wood on it, but no fire under it. And, 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 they, and you, they can call upon the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord, the God and the God who answers by fire, he is God. So all the people answered and said, it is well spoken, we like that one. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's prove this thing out. Now, I want you to know this. He has stacked it in the favor of Baal because Baal was the god of the rain and the lightning. 
and the thunder. He was the God that brought fire from heaven, you know? So he said, let's, let, uh, let's do it this way. And everybody thought, hey, this is cool. This is really cool. And so, uh, so now Elijah said in verse 25, said to the prophets of Baal, choose one bull for yourselves, prepare it first, for you are many and call on the name of your God, but put no fire under it. And so they took the bull which was given to them and they prepared it and they called on the name of Baal from morning, even until noon saying, oh Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, no one answered, but they leaped about the altar which they had made. They're getting fanatical about this. And so it was at noon that Elijah mocked to them and said, cry aloud for he is a God. Either he is meditating or he is busy. He may be going to the bathroom or I added that. He may be on a journey or perhaps he is sleeping and must be awakened. You know what I like about our God? He never sleeps and he's always with us wherever we are. You know, he says, David said in what, Psalm 134, I can go anywhere, I can, I can go as far as my imagination could possibly take me, and there is the Lord, and he's guiding me, and he's directing me, and he's watching over me, you know? But, uh, and so, uh, Elijah's having fun with these guys at this point. So they cried aloud and they cut themselves, as was their custom with knives and lances, until blood gushed out of them. And when midday was past, they, they, they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. That would be about three in the afternoon. But there was no voice. No one answered. No one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, come near to me. All you people come near to, to uh, people come. And all the people came near to him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took 12 stones, according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord had come saying, Israel shall be your name. And then all the stones, he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench around the, the altar large enough to hold two seras of seed. That's about 13 uh, quarts. And he made the wood in old order and, and, uh, and cut the bowl in pieces and laid the wood and he filled the filled four water pots with water and poured it on the bird offering on the wood and he said do it in the do it a second time and they did it a second time and he said do it a third time and they did it a third time so water ran all over the altar and he filled the trench with water and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel and I am your servant and, and that I have done all of these things at your word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned your, their, and you have turned to their backs back to you again. You know, what's interesting is Elijah didn't come up with this himself. He said, I'm doing this because God has commanded me to do this. I'm not out here, you know, a miracle a day is going to keep the devil away and I'm going to make a miracle happen. He came here at the word of the Lord and said, Lord's called me here. Lord's called me to do this and I'm going to stand in faith and I'm going to do what the Lord has clearly called me to do. You know, there's a lot of people who try to fabricate miracles. Our job is not to fabricate miracles. Our job is to listen and follow the Lord our God, you know? So that's what he was doing. And at verse 30 at 11, and then fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust. And it licked up the water that was in the trench. This fire burned the water. And then all the people saw it and they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is God, the Lord, Yahweh, he is God. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and executed them there, according to the law of the Lord. The brook Kishon is right down here below us. In fact, when we go over to Megiddo, we're gonna go over there and kind of see where it is. It's just a little brook in the valley there. On a clear day, you can stand on this hill and you can look right down there and see it. So they just took them all down there and that's where they executed these false prophets of Baal. But you know, uh, people ask, Christians will ask, and I want to address this just briefly. C Christians will ask, where's the God of Elijah? Why don't we see things like this? You know, look at the mighty things that God did. 
in the past, you know? Uh, these powerful miracles. Why isn't God doing that anymore, you know? And, 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 and we wonder, uh, what, what is all that about? And, and I want to say two things about that. Number one is this. Back in that day, it was not a miracle a day keeps the devil away. You didn't walk around and see, an, oh, up, oh, there's another miracle. Oh, look at there. There's another miracle. God is just doing miracles all the time, you know, and every day. Let's go out and see a miracle, you know. It was those miracles in the Bible were far and few between. And there was a whole lot of time that miraculous wise, nothing was happening. But God would show himself and perform his power according to his will in his timing for his purpose and that our God has not changed what what he did then according to his plan his timing and his purpose he does today now the second thing I want to say about that is that very thing God is still at work in fact Jesus made a very interesting statement maybe you remember this he told his disciples most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do will he do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. I go to my Father and send you the Spirit, like we talked about this morning, and you're going to do greater things than I've done. Now, what does he mean by that? I mean, look at what Jesus did. And we're going, we will? Really? Number one, you know what the greatest miracle of all is? the greatest, most powerful, most glorious miracle of all. It's taking a lost sinner and transforming him by his spirit, redeeming him into one of God's children. It's the miracle of the new birth. That is a greater miracle, one time done, than parting the Red Sea. That is the greatest miracle of all, to take something that was absolutely lost and on its way to hell, unredeemable and redeem it and 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 sanctify it and give it his spirit and make it one of his children and that is happening all over the world all the time that's happening to this very day and so and so Jesus you know he prepared the way and he made the way but it's the body of Christ that's doing is God's instrument through that work of salvation. And that's going on. And so when Jesus said, greater things than I'm doing will you do, because I go to the Father, he knew what he was talking about. He knew what he was talking about. And here's the second thing. God is still doing incredible, incredible, mind-bogging miracles. You know, um, the, the church has a history through the ages of some pretty gloriously miraculous things taking place. But God does them according to His will and His timing, and He does them for His purpose. And the fact that there are believers, that's the body of Christ that is filling this world, all over this world, and are servants of the Most High God. Jesus was in one place at one time. And the body of this Christ, the body of Christ, is covering this world and serving the Lord. And God is working gloriously and miraculously all over the world. So Jesus knew what he was talking about. Greater things than these will you do because I because I go to my Father. Um, so what does that come down to? What does that say? I say for us as the body of Christ. <clears throat> Jesus said, it's an evil generation that seeks for a sign. And he doesn't call us to be looking for signs. He says, I've, I, I've, I've put it in writing here. You know what I can do. You know who I am. You know, you know the power I have. And you know, you know what I've done for you. And so, and so you, just, you just receive that. You receive that and buy into it. Don't go after signs and wonders, but just love the Lord who loves you and serve Him with 
the, the abilities and in, in the, the, the way he chooses to use you for his glory. And he will accomplish his works in his way for his glory through each one of us. <coughs> and that's what it comes down to. And when it comes to the supernatural miracles, let him do what he's going to do, when he's going to do it, how he chooses, and use whom he chooses to use to do that. But you just be a follower and a servant of him and see what God wants to do with that. That's the blessing of it. Lay your life down and say, Lord, I'm yours, and see what he wants to do with that. So, brethren, amen. Amen. That's our God. Very good. So where are we going to build the altar? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the water. Do you think it's worth heading up? Because the view is bad. The view is terrible. Yeah. I don't even think you can see it. No. Pretend. <laughs> I mean, when, when it's a clear day, you can go out there and you can see the valley before you. You can see the Kidron down there. You can see the hills down on the other Jezreel, side. Jezreel. Yeah, the Valley of Jezreel. Uh, but you can't even see it. So, I don't think it's worth it. No, the Kidron Valley is out by Jerusalem. Oh, okay. This is the Kishon, the Kishon Stream, and this is the Valley of Jezreel. This is Armageddon, the Valley of Armageddon, and we're going to go right down into it. 